the channel and welcome to the channel. This is the first time joining me. I am Demarius Jackson with Jazz Improv Basics and today we're going to be going over chord substitutions, specifically uh, what you can substitute on the five chord of any 251. Now, we're going to go jump straight into the lesson pretty much. This is assuming that you have a little bit of prior knowledge and you know what I'm referring to with the 251. Uh, I have it written up here on the board. We have a minor 7 chord going to a dominant chord, dominant 7, going to a major chord, and we'll just call it a major 7. So right here you see that I have it written in the uh, key of G. So you have A minor 7 going to D dominant 7 going to a G major 7. Now, the most common substitution, and a lot of you probably already know this, uh, so we'll start with it first. first, is the tritone substitution. Now, all it simply means is you're going to go from the dominant chord, go to the tritone above whatever key it's in, so in this case it's in D, so that dominant chord is uh, G sharp or A flat, I'm going to write it up here, and you play that A flat 7 chord in lieu of the D7. Now, with jazz improv basics and uh, just my whole thought process, I guess, towards jazz, uh, it's a lot of chord scale theory, not chord scale fact, or chord theory and not chord fact. At the end of the day, I just want to kind of play what sounds good, but it's important to kind of know the theory behind it and why. But I tend to think a lot of people overcomplicate the whole process. Yes, you want to know the theory, but at the end of the day, if it sounds good, honestly, it's good. All uh, right, so for that fact, without thinking of fancy words like tritone substitution, which you should know, yeah, uh, but without saying all that, all we're simply doing is going from uh, A minor 7, once again, this is a 2 5 one in the key of G, going down a half step, playing that as a dominant chord, and then resolving. So you have this a chromatic movement from A minor 7 down chromatically to A flat dominant 7, and then down chromatically to G. All right? So basically, you're kind of do this number right here. It's a flow chart. You can play either A minor 7 going to D7, going to G major 7, or you can go A minor 7, A uh, dominant 7, and bam, right back down to this G. Now, there's two other common uh, substitutions that we can use, and I might as well just go ahead and write them out uh, some cold. It's going to be, now here we can substitute a B flat 7, and we can also substitute a F7 chord. Sorry my handwriting is, uh, <laughs> has not improved since I've probably been in the third grade, but it is what it is. All right, so we have uh, these two chords, core substitutions that we can use over here. Uh, so simply stated, right, we can obviously go from A minor 7 to the B7 and to the G major 7 or from A minor 7 to the F7. Sorry if it's getting a little cluttered, uh, but I think you'll get the point. To the F7 to the G major 7. Now you're probably thinking, why? Why can we use these? Well, let's start off with the A flat 7, and this is kind of where the theory gets involved. Why does that tritone substitution work? Simply put, the A flat in the key of D, like we said, is the tritone. Now, we're going to think of things in chords. So, an A flat 7 chord, you have the A flat, you have a C, you have an E flat, and you have a G flat. Let's write that up here. A flat, I'll write it in parentheses. C natural, E flat, and G flat. Now, if we look at this, we already said the A flat is the tritone. The C is the 7. So that's a nice colorful note, it's part of the chord. Then we have an E flat. Well, the E flat, and once again, this is assuming some prior knowledge, but that's basically a flat nine. So it's an alteration to this note. Once again, it's not in the chord, but it's a colorful note, it works. And then you have G flat, which is really, right, and harmonically F sharp, which is the third. So that sounds really, really good. On the opening intro, a little example I played, all I simply did was play that chord, and it fits. Now, let's look at the F7 right here. The F is what in the key of D? It's the sharp 9. So, once again, that's an alteration over the dominant chord. And let's go ahead and write it out over here. I'll write a little number right here. This is getting cluttered really quick. I should have thought this better through. So, we have F, A, C, and E flat. Those are the notes in the F7 dominant chord. So, once again, with a little quick analysis, you can quickly see why this works and our magic uh, D7. D is, can be altered 
all over the place and it will probably sound good as long as you resolve it correctly to the, the next major chord, which is G. So F is like we said, the sharp nine, the A is the five, the C is the seven, and the E flat is the flat nine in the key of D. And then we'll finally go ahead and write B flat down here. A B flat dominant chord is, whoops, B flat, D, F, and A flat. And once again, if we look here, that B flat in the key of D7 is the flat 13. D is the one that fits. F is the sharp nine, which you can see up here in the other chord, it, it also fits on there. And the A flat is, as we stated before, is that tritone and the key of D. So all of these, basically all you're doing is altering that dominant chord. And we can go into another lesson on that later. I'll probably do like a uh, uh, altered dominant scale chord. It's very simple the way that you can think of it. Um, without all this overcomplication <laughs> that you have on the board, the, my easiest way to figure out what chord I can substitute as a part of that dominant chord in any 2 5 1 is I basically take my original 2 5 1, which we have here, A, D, G, and I look at my dominant chord and I ask myself, D, all right, D is the third of what chord? Well, D is the third of a B flat. All right, B flat dominant chord. So basically I make my dominant chord the third of the dominant that I'm going to figure out what I can use over that dominant chord. Jesus, I said dominant a lot of times. So let's use an example for instance. Let's write it over here. If uh, hopefully this makes sense. If not, I have a link down in the description. I'll write all these things out. Some people learn by seeing, some people learn by hearing, and some people learn by reading. So we'll, we'll try to cover our, our basis here. Well, let's give an example. So we're going to do a common key, right? C major. So we look at uh, a 2 5 1 and the key of C. We have D minor 7 going to a G7 going to C. So how do I figure out what chords I can substitute over the G? Well, I make G the third of what dominant chord? G is the third of what dominant chord? Well, G is the third of E flat dominant. So that simply means I can play an E flat 7. I already have the G. I can play a B flat 7, right? And I can play a D flat 7. Well, look at here, right? We have that tritone substitution, like I said before, resolving down to that major and then the other three chord alterations that you have there. So for me, it's a little complicated, but I'm trying to make everything simple. That was, like I said, my basis when I, when I kind of started Jazz Improv Basics and the books that I write on pentatonics or enclosures, whatever it may be. Yes, it's important to know the theory and all that stuff, and this probably just looks like a blur. At the end of the day, you can play what sounds good, and hopefully this is an easy way to figure out what you can use to play over those chords to see which ones you like. Some of them you may not like. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to play, I uh, have my best friend, Mr. Abersoll, with me here in the building, and we're going to play uh, over this uh, 2 5 1 in the key of G, and then I'll just go through the basses. So I'll play this twice, and I'm basically just going to play the, the chords 1, 3, 5, 7. I might throw a 9 in there every once in a while. Just keep it nice and simple. And then I'll play the, the tritone substitution, as we call it, the chromatic movement, and then I'll play F. And then I'll play the B flat, and then you can kind of like hear for yourself. Or go ahead and pull out your horn and you know play around with it, see which ones you like, and see which ones you don't. All right, so here we go. This first one, like I said, will be the original two five one. Then we'll go from the top, A flat, F, and then I'll skip D because I already did it, and B flat. Here we go. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
So there you have it. Once again, those are a couple of different cores that you can use uh, substitute over a typical 251. Once again, I'll have the link down in the description. Uh, looking at it, it's like crazy flow charty up here. Once again, chord theory is not chord fact. A lot of times you have to play what sounds good. But at least with a lot of these things, it gives you a kind of a, a stepping point, a tipping point to, to go over the experiment with what you like personally and what you don't like and maybe what you've heard on different recordings now you're like an aha moment. All right, so hope you enjoyed it. Smash the like button, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you on the next time.